Say goodbye to IDE and say hello to ADE because Warp 2.0 is finally here. From code terminal agents to warp drive, Today, I will only use my voice to create and thrive. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe because if you don't, I'm gonna get so fired. So Warp 2.0 has introduced two new features, code and agents. Code in a nutshell allows you to build complex features using a coding agent and also edit and improve your diffs on its very own code editor. So it's no longer just a terminal. And the agents, it allows you to finally run and manage multiple agents doing different tasks within Warp. Yada, yada, yada. I'm not gonna bore you with descriptions. So what we're going to do in this video is develop apps using only my voice. And of course, try the new code and agents. So this is the new Warp 2.0. And at the very top, we have the warp drive where you can create a team to share your commands and knowledge. And of course, you can also have your personal space where you can add MCP servers, rules, and workflows. After the warp drive, we have the terminal tabs. You can create a new tab by pressing Command T or Control T on Windows. And at the very end, you'll find the agents panel where you can install dependencies, code, deploy your app, or just start a new agent. Later on, we're going to try to deploy our app. Now, moving on to the input section, this is where you'll, of course, type your prompts. But this is also where you'll find your directories or folders. Like, if you change your current folder, it's just going to run cd command. So you have a nice GUI. Beside that, you'll have your contacts. And this switch right here is if you want to focus on running terminal commands or using agents. If you set this to auto, Warp will automatically detect whether you're typing a command or a prompt. This section right here is the most interesting for me, of course. You can use your voice to write your prompts. For example, Jarvis, are you in there? Good morning, sir. Can we build a SAS landing page using Vit and Tailwind CSS? It appears that we can, sir. And that should write whatever you said. And not just that, if you want to have better results, you can upload an image or a wireframe design so you get what you want. I prepared a design here that was made by Framer. We'll just upload that and now let's run it. Oh, so this is what I was trying to avoid, because this way of installing Tailwind is pretty outdated. According to the documentation of Tailwind CSS, this is how you should install it. But it is good that we encounter this because we can refine this and tell Warp to use the correct command. So just click the refine button and say, according to the documentation, you can install Tailwind CSS using npm install Tailwind CSS at Tailwind CSS forward slash vit. So let's run it and there we go. And here we have our app. I knew it's not going to be super accurate, but it's still impressive that it made the application. And if for some reason you're not satisfied with how it looks, you can always go back to the Warp app and tell it to change the landing page title to subscribe to BetterStack. And that should make a new diff. And this is where you can start editing the diff that it provided. And we can apply the changes and that should update the diff once again. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is the framework like Vue.js or React, but Warp just decided to use vanilla JavaScript. So let's try to use multiple agents to work on different tasks. So the first task that I wanna give it is this. I noticed that we are using vanilla JS. Can you install Vue.js and make components to make the landing page more similar to the screenshot that I have provided earlier? Let's run that and I'll turn on this auto approve actions so that I don't have to review whatever it makes. And now while that's running, I'll start a new agent and give it an instruction to create a new Git project and a readme file describing the project and bullet points of recommendations to improve this landing page. Now I know it's not going to create the best readme file since the other agent is still working on the app, but I just wanted to show you that you can run multiple agents at once. So if you need an agent to work on the front end, you can do that. And if you want to work on the back end using another agent, you can also do that. It's pretty cool. Okay, everything is done. Let's see the results. Well, this is awkward. It didn't really change anything, except now the accordions are working properly. Yay. Let's do another project. This time I would like to create a full stack web application with login and registration pages. So let's just run that and let's do six and a half hours later. And there we go. Honestly, this is much better. We've got animations. Can you believe that? You really need to be very specific with what you need. Since I didn't mention navigation bar, it's not going to make it. But hey, 
we have a landing page and a login page, a sign up page, and a dashboard where you can create projects and tasks. It's crazy that we managed to create this with just one prompt. It's amazing. Let's do one last project that we can easily deploy because I want to show you how it works. Let's create a browser-based single-player game inspired by Agar.io using HTML5 Canvas. Now let's give it a go and bam, we have another project. Now, one thing I would like to try is the deployment. So let's go create a new tab and select deploy. Okay, so it looks like there is no integration with other platforms like Vercel or AWS. I'm assuming it's just going to set up the deployment. So let's say I would like to deploy the agario-game.html that we worked on earlier, but I'm not sure where to deploy it. Can you give me recommendations? So it provided a list of free hosting providers and it highly recommended the GitHub pages. So let's try that. Now it's going to look for commands that it can use to deploy the project. So I assume that if you want to use or if you want to deploy your projects to let's say Vercel, then it's going to use Vercel CLI. All right, so now it's done. Let's open this URL and there we go. We have our game deployed. Not really a game, but we managed to deploy it. <laughs> So, which is actually pretty nice. Now, this is just from what I experienced, but Warp is actually much better compared to Cursor when it comes to building web apps. I'm not really talking about the results. I know the results can be better, but I'm talking more about the developer experience. With Cursor, there's so much distraction and honestly, I've, I've encountered a lot of issues or errors with Cursor and with Warp, I've got just a couple of them. So it's great that you can literally just focus on building and prompting. And when you're done, it can help you with deployment. Now, one thing I don't like though, is when you're running NPM run dev, you'll have to start a new agent panel to continue working on your project, or it doesn't recognize that it already started the run dev command. So it's going to start another run dev. So guys, what do you think? You think Warp is better than Cursor or Cloud Code? Let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more Warp related videos, subscribe to Better Stack because we have more videos coming that I'm sure you will enjoy. So thank you for watching. My name is Bernard and I will see you in the next one.